On today's show, Google introduces us to a brand new robot that terrifies us. Apparently, some sheep are going to get Wi-Fi. Well, I'll, I'll tell you more in a sec. <laughs> and your future hearing aids might actually be worn in your mouth. That's not how ears work. No, it's not. It's tomorrow Daily. <laughs> Greetings, citizens of the internet. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. You look like you're massaging an invisible person. I'm your host, Ashley Eskeva. Joining me as always, Kill Anonymous. What's wrong? Wait, just release your emotion. You're all, you're all tense in the back. I'm invisible person. You gotta work person. the thumbs. Invisible it's, person. It's always the thumbs that you gotta work on the on the on the on the back. The, on the on your that'll delts. That'll be uh, yeah. That'll be on uh, on tomorrow daily massage edition. So look yeah. forward to that. We're gonna that's gonna be a separate video on demand release. Mm -hmm. so you, you know they have mod spend. squad. We're gonna have massage squad. The Saj squad. There's, there's an actual show to this, right? Like we're actually. I think there is show. a real show, so let's hit the headlines. Okay. okay, so in late 2013, Google bought Boston Dynamics, which is that robotics company that's had like Pet Man and Big Dog and all those really terrifying robots that they show that can run really fast yeah, and everything. Okay. Yeah. So they just introduced their newest robot. Google has has introduced this new robot. It's called Spot. So this is uh, this is Spot. Ugh. These are all of the ro these are a lot of the robots they're working on. The four legged ones. There's Spot right there. It's going to start moving and, and walking about inside Boston Dynamics office building. Um, so here's the thing that's interesting about that is that in fact it is working inside an office building. So all of the other bigger robots are gas powered. So two things, two 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 prongs of that. It's electric. Hey. By the way, that guy's kicking a dog. Uh, he's kicking a robot dog. Is that okay to kick a robot dog? I don't think it is, but a lot of people do it all the time. But look at it recover. That's really scary, right? So, um, and I also like that they travel in packs. Like they have a couple of them that walk around together in a second. So it's it's electric powered now instead of gas powered. Meaning one, everyone who works with these things doesn't need to have hearing protection because the gas powered ones sound like a thousand chainsaws being blown around by a thousand leaf blowers. Right. Like it's so right. loud. You're good at that. And then the other uh, thing is that it can go indoors because it's not releasing fumes. It's electric. So it, it can actually go inside. Oh my God. It's so cute. It Usually is Usually I'm scared by this stuff, but like this one, it's smaller, it's cuter. Yeah. It's not running really fast like the no, other ones. It's can, about, can it go fast though? It can go a little faster than what's, what it is in the video, but not much faster. And the other, see, it's, it can try. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. But it, look, it's about the size of a large dog. So you can see the guy running next to it. This so you guy can, can ride it. Like, yeah. this is what I want. Here they are, they're jogging I together. I want a robot horse dog horse thing. Horse dog? You want a robot horse, a pony dog? That's fantastic. Okay. It's so great. Okay, so have they, what is Boston Dynamics like? What are they aiming to do with these robot dog things? I mean, like, it seems like it could do a lot of things, but what are they, so, like, what are they you, projected? Funny, no, don't say rescue. Funny that you mentioned horses because one of the reasons they're developing these things, like um, Big Dog, one of the things they're developing is uh, allowing, like, either soldiers or people to put heavy equipment or, or packs or things like that, like um, supplies on the backs of these yeah. things. Yeah. And then have them, if you need to walk somewhere, if you need to go somewhere without taxing yourself, you can actually put them on uh, on these dogs, these robo dogs. Yeah, wow. All right. So really cool. That Google money is paying off. Uh, well, so before, it's this is actually uh, just an interesting little side note about that video. So before, whenever Boston Dynamics would show video, they would put uh, funded by the US government because they used to be funded by DARPA. Mm -hmm. And so now they're not. They're they're owned by Google. And this is the first time we've seen a video that hasn't uh, annotated where the funding for that robot came from. So it's very possible oh. this might be a, an entirely Google uh, funded robot. So it's it's really interesting to see kind of how that company has sort of morphed in the last year. They're and a half. progressing so fast. These it's pretty guys. crazy. Watching yeah. them like like Big Dog. How long ago was that? That was like, like not a even a few years ago. Like a oh, year or two years? ago. Yeah. I feel like the really scary one that well, like keep, hopped back and forth was pretty. They recently. keep updating them, so you'll see the I'm ones saying, that yeah. are like yeah, like Cheetah Bot is the one that runs really really fast, like and then Pet Man is like the one that looks like a person and it can like squat and like t pivot and stuff. Mm -hmm. That freak, like that freaks me out. I don't like that. Um, but Spot looks pretty cool, and I feel like I might I might like that in my house someday. Maybe like a little helpful robot. Yeah, running a around, dog robot. scaring your other dogs. Scaring all the other dogs. Speaking of animals, uh, you, uh, I want to talk about a Wi-Fi sheep. Did you say you? You, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
moment of silence for that terrible joke. Uh, I want to talk about Wi-Fi sheep. Okay. Okay. So it's really hard to get internet in rural areas. Okay. Yeah, okay. There was Project Loon that Google put on. Uh, but Gordon Blair is a professor from Lancaster 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 University who is using uh, sensor equipped sheep to create hot spots. Wow. Okay. Uh, also, this is stuff like this has be, uh, been done before. Uh, last summer, a UK cell service uh, company, EE, put these sensors in like cow statues oh, okay. uh, at a music festival. All right. So give so, people like hot spots at the festival. Yeah. Okay, so cool. apparently, it's really easy to put these sensors on, say, a collar. So they're, they want to put collars on uh, these sheep and, you know, provide a little bit of Wi-Fi. <laughs> you have a little hotspot action. Yep. Uh, so, so our B-roll, by the way, can I just say really quick, our B-roll for this has absolutely nothing to do with the story. It was just, just, sheep just blocks of sheep because that was all I could find. Those aren't Wi-Fi sheep. Those are normal those are thigh not, sheep. Those are disconnected uh, sheep. They're disconnected. Okay, please continue. Now, they, I wa- now I just want to watch the sheep, watch sheep footage. Sheep. Uh, so, uh, okay, so a lot of people are doing a lot of, okay, first of all, this technology can do a lot of things. I'm okay. going to unravel that. Okay. And then I'm going to quickly tell you how this is being used with other animals, too. Okay, Scandinavia great. is using reindeers. Uh, they're, they're potentially going to use reindeers with this technology. That's amazing. Uh, so some of the things that this tech can do, if you put it on your sheep, if you're at home and you want to put this on your sheep, you uh, sheep? It, can, it can help you figure out uh, agriculture. Okay. Uh, also, note if there's flooding, pollution, uh, where your flock is. Yeah, yeah okay. Where, so you get GPS, get it located. Yeah, where the flock are they? Um, and then <laughs> air quality and, and lots of other stuff. Um, Austria may use the ear tags as hot spots oh, for Wi Fi. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, a like little, little, the little ear tags they use yeah. to like identify the sheep, they would also be able to put sort of a little sensor in there. To yeah, make so Wi-Fi. you can find out if they're under attack. Interesting. Like, I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff. It, this isn't just Wi Fi sheep, but that's the cool thing. This is part. interesting. Yeah, it sounds like when you're saying where they could track pollution and stuff, that they would be able to also put those sensors in like stationary places or, around their farm. So, like, if you had like a tree or whatever, or you could actually put, or yeah, or a scarecrow yeah. or whatever, you could place these sensors around to help track your farm and all of the things happening around and in it. Yeah, I mean, so apparently we're a few years away from it, but I mean, this is, it just totally makes sense. Good, I, good I job. love this. Good job, farmers. Yeah, yeah. Use, your, use your animals. Just some, like, you'll be like, is there a sheep around here? I'm not getting a Wi Fi. It's like, like the no. idea of Kill and I going out in the middle of nowhere in like New Zealand, and we're just like, we just can't find any Wi Fi. We, where's, where's the nearest flock of sheep? It's, where's, it, where's that? I think that's, I think that's, I think it's a really cool technology, especially the whole like, it senses the air. I yeah. mean, this is this is per- farmers need this information so they right. can well, they can make me really good. and stuff. Yeah, they make you hammers. That's terrible. Don't tell don't tell the sheep that. They they don't know. Um, no, they can make you clothes. They can oh, make yeah. nice clothes, yeah. woolen make clothes, me socks. wool socks. Yeah. Uh, but I really like this because if you have a farm and you're like Scandinavia has this tribe that lives up in the northern like northern Scandinavia, and they literally like travel with their reindeer flocks. This is like. Permanently, like that's how they live, uh-huh. and so for them to be able to have connectivity is something that really they've they've never had you know access to before. So that's pretty cool that they're you know working on this type of stuff. So crazy that your reindeer can get you on Facebook. Yeah, your reindeer will be able to get, log you into Wikipedia <laughs> so that you can look up uh, new names for your reindeer. You can find cool new names for your reindeer. You can name cool stuff on Wikipedia. Uh, that brings us to our hashtag of the day, which is hashtag TD Sheep. <laughs> Um, what else can we do with animals and technology if we combine them? I mean, we've seen the robot dog. We've seen Wi-Fi sheep. I mean, what are other things that you guys can come up with that we could do with technology and animals? You know, 50-50, when, when it's my turn to do the TD, it's either, like, ridiculous or I gave a little bit of thought and it's still ridiculous and stupid. But do you remember Twitch, uh, Twitch plays Pokemon and then they did Fish plays Pokemon? Yeah. I want to see more games where we're having animals play video games. Play video games for, uh-huh. like, just like automatically? Sheep plays GTA. <laughs> sheep. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sheep plays GTA would be really Mou- dangerous. Mouse plays, um, mouse plays Grim Fandango. Something. No, I like that. <laughs> like, it was like running around in a maze or something. Yeah, have the new Call of Duty be by a cow. It should be Cow of Duty. Oh, Cow of Duty. I'm sure there's a lot of other puns. Uh, if you hashtag TD, if you have a pun, please send yeah, it to please, me. Yeah, please just send it uh, over. What about you? Uh, I think for me, uh, with animals, I, I really like the idea of... Um, I really like the idea of navigation. So, like, seeing eye dogs, 
I like the idea of having uh, like sensors in the collar that would help a blind person get around even better. Oh my God, that's brilliant. Yeah, like I like I think that would be really cool. So, so, uh, so how would it feed back into the human? Well, I think you could do it via smartphone, via like um, either uh, you could do Morse code or you could do some kind of notification with the with the vibrations. Or like an earpiece. Or an earpiece or something like that where it was like, uh, you know, like for example, a dog could technically go across the street, but then maybe the sensors can sense if there are, you know, like obviously these dogs are really well trained, but I would say just an added enhanced layer of like extra things that it could sense in the environment that the dog necessarily couldn't or, or wouldn't be able to do as well as like an actual technological sensor. Right. I think right. that would be really cool. It also helped to know where your dog is if he's in your house and he's walking around. Or your dog jumping off a gate and running running away in your ooh, front yard, ooh, like no. like hey, what happened hey, this morning with my dog. Down. All right. I'm gonna freak All out. Right. Um, I, I actually I actually think that it's gonna be a hard one to beat. Yeah. That so you're your T D. So I guess we'll good. see. Um, you're either gonna have to beat hers or beat my pun. Yeah, beat a good pun. Um okay. Wait. So I have to tell you about this hearing aid because I saw this video and I thought it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Okay. Uh, no. so, so obviously when we think of hearing aids, we think of those little bits that you put in your ear and then you know you can turn it up or down based on a little pack and stuff. Like there's kind of a, you know, that's kind of the, the basis of it. That's the only thing you really think of. Well, not anymore because this engineer named John Williams, not that John Williams, uh, is saying it's totally possible to hear through your tongue. Okay, so. Okay. I don't even know where to begin with this, but yeah. I will try. So he's building Ew. this device that uh, sends sound impulses. It sends impulses into your tongue, like electrical impulses into your tongue. Um, and he is hoping to teach the brain how to translate those impulses and decode them into something you'd be able to, quote, unquote, hear. So um, this works a lot like Braille. So this is, the, this is what I have, like, the understanding I have of it is it works a little bit like Braille. So when somebody goes blind yeah. and they need to use Braille, they have what's called a sensory, what is it called? Sense substitution, sense substitution. Right. And so they get better at things like uh, feeling things and understanding Braille yeah, or hearing your, better. Your sense is heightened. Right, right, right exactly. They're like Daredevil, like Daredevil. So we went blind and now I can hear everything. All right, so now I understand. We'll get that. So it's a sense substitution. So it works similarly to that. So this object uh, would basically allow, you would have to train your tongue and your brain to decode those impulses into, into actually hearing, but it oh. would, you would basically train your, your mouth to hear, like, and, as opposed to your ears doing it for you. And how long does it take to train your tongue? So they're not sure yet. So here's the thing is, um, it's, they're using like, they're saying the hearing aid would be like a retainer that you yeah. would just pop in, um, just like a retainer. Oh. No, just all day. Like okay. you, you'd wear it during the day, like you would a normal retainer. And, um, and then you would like press your tongue up against it if you wanted to hear, like, like you press your tongue up against it for those impulses. Gotcha. So you wouldn't be getting hit all the time with like just crowd noise and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's only things you choose to sort of listen to. But um, the one thing they have to do is they have to map out all the nerves in people's tongues because they're not sure if they can make one device that is sort of a one size fits all type thing because everyone's nerves are sort of mapped the same yeah. or if everyone's nerves are mapped just a little bit differently causing it to be like a custom build situation for every single patient. Like we don't they, know they don't that? Know. Well, that's what they're working on right now. So they're so they built the prototype like for one person and now he's like, okay, now that we've built this prototype, yeah. like now we can move on and see if this works the same with every person and so then we'd only have to build one thing or would this be more like a prosthetic where it would have to be custom made for each individual person. Wow. All right. But totally crazy. And That's, I thought that was yeah, cool. never would have thought about hearing from my tongue. And apparently this uh, potentially <laughs> could be way cheaper than a cochlear implant, which is like they can run up to like $100,000 once you have like testing and implanting it and all that other stuff. So, and it's also a lot less dangerous because you're just popping a retainer in your mouth instead of, you know, having surgery inside your ear to implant something. So pretty cool. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I saw this. I saw the headline today, and I was just like, "No, no, that's wrong. Like that's that can't be right." And it was. That's, and then I'm it was. I'm going to wrap my brain around that one. Yeah. Still, it's still so brain wrapping that he's okay. happened. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's take a quick break. break. Let's take a quick break and try to wrap our heads around that, and we'll be right back with our our experience at at the Marvel experience. Oh yeah, we've been tr talking about we've this. Talk, for a long we talked time. about it last week. Um, we finally have a video for you. We're excited to show it to you, and then we also have your user feedback and our phone talker for the day. So don't look away. It's tomorrow daily.
Welcome back to the show. Oh. Kale's still trying to figure it out. Okay, so here we go. We finally get to talk about the Marvel experience. We do. Okay. I'm really excited. So This has been a big question mark that's been in the air. So anybody that's like a nerd knows that there is this, this traveling show that Marvel is putting on. It's like a traveling circus, but not quite. Yeah, it's it's got a, and the reason we're covering it, because not only have we have cover nerd-centric stuff, but we it like also Marvel. has a lot of cool technology. But it's this traveling show that's been going around, and people have been like, well, okay, so what's, the deal? what's in there? What is it like? Is it cool? Like, I want to see a little bit of it. So, so, producer Logan. Here you go. Thank you for this. Okay, so stage one, we're going to the recruitment staging area. We just put our information in to get our yes. shield badges. We're so feeling yeah. very heroic. Yeah, this is this is stage one, so we're gonna go in there and check that out. So yeah. let's let's do it. Every button over here. Our intelligence suggests that a deadly, hyper advanced android army is warming. More powerful than anything we've ever seen or faced. So as you already know, it's all contained in a dome, but there's there's a whole lot of effects going on, whether it be sound, light. So it's pretty cool. It's not just, you know, like a room with stuff in it. There's all kinds of technology here at the Marvel Experience, including Connect. This is an interactive video experience where you stand in front of the Connect and then you can summon your favorite event. By just doing something like this. Oh, see, I got Iron Man. I brought an Iron Man. Here he is. All right, so we're here with Rick, CEO of Hero Ventures, the, the creator of this entire thing, right? This is your baby. Uh, this is my baby, and no one's more excited to be here than me. How did you go about choosing what you were going to put in each dome? You know, there's so many different types of media. There's so many different ways to, to present the content. We wanted to keep ratcheting it up a level with each new dome. So you start with a screen, you go to dome projection, you get to this main dome with a dozen unique interactive elements, and then there's a 360 degree holographic dome coming up that you haven't seen yet, Kale. There's a motion ride, there's a there's a Hulk moment that I'm not gonna yeah. spoil for yeah. you, and a bunch of other things that are a lot of firsts here at the Marvel Experience. experience it is touring it's coming to a town near you hopefully you can check it out online uh, Kale is gonna go buy all of these action figures and we are going to uh, we're gonna continue shopping so bye Kale, Kale, we, we don't we don't have the budget for that we, nope. so that was our that was our Marvel experience and Two uh, hours, by the way. Okay, so we'll break down real quick. We'll give quick. you some facts. Do, do it like shotgun so it's not like we don't okay. draw it out. So Scatter it's like, shot. It's, it's th around 35 bucks, like depending on peak hours and holidays and stuff. It's anywhere between $29.95 and $39.95 if it's like, you know, that's the, uh, the price range for adults. Over 12. So you have to be 13 plus. It's between $29 and $39 to go. It's a two-hour experience. You can go to themarvelexperiencetour.com to check out more about it if you want to learn more. There were seven domes plus a gift shop. Mm. Um, technically three domes. That technically were... three big domes and then like a few other like sort of staging areas where they had some cool interactive stuff like a Spider-Man safety video that, that made us all very entertained and yeah. we laughed. Um, but it was cool. Like I thought it was interesting that they went with uh, sort of more of the comic book characters it's not cinematic universe like you're not going to see don't go expecting cinematic universe you're not going to see anybody from any of the movies you're not no. going to see any clips from the movies you're not you're not even going to hear the voice of anybody from the Correct. movies it's completely separated imagine it's just a mar like marvel property comic books you get to see all the like imagine an animated marvel you know special but like it, but they but kind an of interactive blow it up. experience so yeah there and you there, go. so and then one of the big domes is like a training area where there's all kinds of ar and like the stuff that you saw and then there's a full 360 
excuse me, 360 degree video, which was really cool. Really cool. And then there was also the last thing was a theater that you sat down and had the chairs that moved and everything, and it was sort of a Star Tours esque yeah. uh, sort of. So every video. single dome has something completely different, and yeah. honestly, the way I feel about it is, if you super love Marvel or you just like are a child at heart, you have to go as a child at heart, then you'll enjoy it. Yeah. You have to go as a child at heart. Don't go as your grumpy internet self. Yeah, don't go, go as, as a grumpy a Gus. Don't yeah. go as a grumpy internet Gus. Go as a child and enjoy it for what it is. Because And don't expect it to be like the whole of Disney's Tomorrowland turned into the Stark Expo, because that's mm. not what it is. This is a traveling tour. So obviously they got to keep it easy to travel with. I mean, if you keep all of your expectations in check, I think it's really fun, and yeah. I think you would have a good time. That's the thing is, I, occasionally I slipped into grumpy internet mode mm -hmm. and be like, eh, this eh, should be better. This isn't the movies. Mm -hmm. I would have done this. I would have been like, okay, be the childlike kale that you usually are, mm -hmm. and I had a good time. So. And I, I think that we both agree that if they had done, uh, we would have liked to have seen, if we could offer improvement, we would have liked to have seen um, a little more set dressing outside, although I heard it's a lot cooler at night. Yeah, they, they project stuff onto the dome. I would have liked to see it in costume characters, so I could have like yeah. taken a selfie with like Captain America or Spider Man or something yeah, like that. Yeah, or even even and I would like have loved more shield characters. representation, whether it be someone in a suit. Like these, I'm only, I'm only suggesting things that seem for a little simple. immersive. Yeah, a little more immersion would have been cool. I'm not but like wouldn't it be cool in a giant laser beam and shot at everybody? Like nothing like that. Just like easy. Just hire a couple couple of actors. But put overall, them in suits. We had a good time. Yeah, had a good time. We had a good time. I got a cool She-Hulk shirt out of it. I wore it on Monday. Mm -hmm. I, like I got that. all those. There was only Thor. Sta I only bought Thor statues. I bought yeah, a ton of Thor statues. Yeah, that was all Kale wanted to buy. Fight them against each other. But yeah, no, I, I I picked up a. I I bought one in the gift shop. I was like, oh, they got some good stuff here. You so wore it on today's uh, I did yesterday's wear it on the episode. Show. So I did. Check um, that out. So that was the Marvel experience. Uh, you guys can check that out online. It is it is pretty cool if it comes to your hometown. It's traveling all over the place. I think the next stop is San Francisco. So if you're up in the Bay Area, you might want to take a look. Um, and, but it was really cool that we got to break out of the studio, though. We did. We well, that escaped. That was awesome. Yeah. We got now, more footage. We're going to have, like, a, a, a much longer experience. We even ran into a fan. Hey, Brian. Yeah, hey, Brian. Uh, and so it's, it's going to be extended. You'll That'll see be more on CNET. of what it's like. You'll see an extended. You'll get to get a, a bigger feel of what's going on if you're still trying to decide whether to buy the ticket. Even though we had a great time, though, producer Logan, maybe not so much. There's, that's his picture from Ooh. the show. Just, he was. Yeah. He didn't get to have as much fun as we did because yeah. he was really, really busy working the camera. That's how he's. Yeah, stuff. he looks right now while he's doing this. It probably video. is. All right, guys, it's time for your user feedback. All right, it is time for user feedback on Spider Man. We asked you guys to use the hashtag TD Spidey to tell us who you wanted to see. Where are the tights next? Uh, get the web slinging powers. How many people said Donald Glover? Nobody. Really? Paul wrote to us and said, how about some diversity in the Marvel Hero set? Make Spider-Man Asian. Peter Park instead of Peter Parker. <laughs> I like that he even had the name. I know. What about Mexican Spider-Man? Uh, Peter Parko. Paco Parker. Done. You're welcome. Paco Parker. I'm in. Sign Paco me up. Parker. I like it. Well done. Fabio wrote into us and said, Logan Lerman from Percy Jackson seems good. I like that choice. All right, yeah. I thought that was a very good choice. Uh, Ali wrote in and said, the kid from Boyhood, Eller Coltrane. He's about the right age. Is he? He is. He's like, isn't he like 17, 18 mm, right now? So I yeah. think they're looking for about that age. That might That's be a perfect, really good choice. Because agent's probably, you know, chomping at the Oh, man, I'd like be that. lobbying so hard if I was his agent. Uh, Rick wrote in and said, how about Patrick J. Adams, a.k.a. Mike Ross from Suits as Spider-Man? How old is this guy? I was going to say, he might be a little bit on the old end of the spectrum. He's Spider-Man's dad. Spider-Man's Spider -Man. Spider older brother. Um, and then Joey wrote in and, of course, told the answer that we all think, which is kill anonymous <laughs> Spider-Man himself. <laughs> oh, no. Just My FYI, he, aren't so great. I think you're actually you're just giving up Kale's secret uh, identity as Spider-Man. Didn't notice I do this all the time. Yep, you want to hold myself? So I take my selfies like this. Yep, and you shoot webs out. You're like, yay! Um, <laughs> you guys had some really good user feedback. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, but uh, of course, it's time for our very last piece of user feedback, which is always our phone talker for the day. So Dave wrote in to us and said, I took this pic with my now out of date iPhone 4S. It finally rained here a couple of days ago. And this is the little creek that runs through a yard of a nearby house, which means you're trespassing, and then comes out Busted. about a block away at a local park. The little bridge really makes this photo. You'd almost think it was the idyllic British countryside, but it's a couple of blocks from where we live in Sebastopol, California. 
Sebastopol, a little town about 50 miles north of San Francisco. Charles Schulz used to live in Sebastopol, and I hear that Norman Greenbaum of Spirit in the Sky fame lives up the road in Santa Rosa. Tech Connection, O'Reilly, the tech book publisher, is in town. Love the show. Grumpy old man Dave. <laughs> at, least he, at least he's up to date on it. You own it. Uh, I like it. Yes, he's right. It does look like a charming little It does. It looks English like a little town. a little countryside yeah. English, uh, uh, little English village. Awesome. That bridge is delightful. Like that bridge, yeah. Um, yeah, I totally dug this. I thought it was really, really well composed, very beautifully taken. Yeah. Um, well, listen, you grump. At least you live close to something like that. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that'll cheer you up, you grumpy old man. That's all I'm saying. Maybe Easy it'll now. just bring Calm you a little down. cheer. Well, make him a, even more grumpy. No, make you bring you a little cheer. I hope we. I hope hopefully we also do the same thing. We bring you, make we cheer you up a little bit after a long day of being grumpy. Mm -hmm. Watch our show. Or make cheerful. you more grumpy. Maybe maybe we want to leave an know. impression of some sort. Some sort, yes. Um, but I, I I dug it. I thought it was a good picture. Um, if you guys want to submit your picture to be featured for Photographer of the Day, you can email us tomorrow at cnet.com. Feel free to send over your user feedback, story ideas. If you see something on the internet oh, yeah. that you feel like we should cover, send that over. Uh, and if you absolutely hate email, that's fine too, because we also use social media. We're on Tumblr, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're Tomorrow Daily on all those things, and Tomorrow Daily TV over on Google+. But I don't really check that very often, so please try those other social medias first. <laughs> Nobody does. Uh, and if you're getting your Wi-Fi from a sheep, don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel, True. leave a comment, and like it. And then if you're listening on the podcast, you missed all the sheep pictures. You missed all the, the flocks the, of sheep. Don't, don't even look it up on Google because you just missed out. Uh, don't forget to, if you're again, if you're listening on the podcast, to rate and review and to subscribe. So there you go. Cool. All, all the good things. And, of course, you can find us on our own personal Twitters. I am at Ashley Esqueda. And I am at Kale Anonymous. And we will be back tomorrow with a whole new docket of weird, wonderful technology and uh, geek pop culture news for you to chew on. Uh, but until then, be good humans, and we'll see you next time. Bye.